Hi, and welcome to Philos Academy. Today we are going to look at um, how to prepare one way and over using Excel. So kindly pay attention and please, if you are new to this channel, please support the channel by subscribing, like and then sharing the video after watching. Thank you. So let's go straight to the point and the question says, given the following sample information, can we conclude that the treatment means are equal at 0.05 significance level they've written 0 0.05 here it also means 0 0.05 okay or five percent okay so to do this quickly what you do is that you go to data click on data and then you look out for data analysis it's supposed to be at the top right corner here but since you can see there okay it's not there right so just like mine since it's not there what you do is that you go to file and then you look out for options right at the down there so when you click on options then you look out for add-ins so we have add-ins here so you click on add-ins and then you have analysis tool path after that you choose analysis tool path when you click on the go also you see the analysis tool path analysis tool path bva euro currency tools and server add -ins. so you just select the analysis tool path okay then you click okay then after that you go back to the data then this time around as you can see clearly we have data analysis so you choose your data analysis so when you after loading it displays this box so you have an over single factor an over two factor with replication and over two factor without replication so because we are looking at one way and over you choose single factor in this topic okay we are looking at one way and over, so you choose single factor. So you click OK. Now pay attention to this part clearly. Now what we're going to do here is that you input the range. So the range of your data. So it's from cell C3 here. Okay, here. Then you drag it. You click and drag downward. You see, you have A3 to C8. This cell is cell C8 and this one is cell A3. Or you can type the name of the cells if you if you know it okay then include the reference the d the dollar sign okay the dollar symbol then you come to the group the grouping now is your data grouped by columns or was it grouped by row to know if it is grouped by columns or rows it's important you know what columns are and what rows are the vertical ones are the columns so this is column a column b column c column d and the horizontal ones are the what are the rows so this is row one row two row three row four row five going i hope you are following so the grouping of mine is that it is grouped by columns okay mine is grouped by columns so i'll just choose columns okay if yours is grouped by rows let's say the written treatment one year treatment two year and treatment three year and then the values are at the front of it then yours is grouped by rows so you select rows okay then when you come to this place as well they say labels in first row labels in first row what this means is that when i was doing my selection of the input range i included the, the title of each column isn't it or each row because i included the title in the selection of the input range i started from here i didn't start from here i started from the title because i start from the title i'm going to mark this place if you had not started if you had if you didn't start from the title and you had started from here okay you wouldn't have marked this place okay but because i started from the title you mark it okay because you start from the title you have to mark it okay then the alpha means the level of significance so if the level of significance is one percent if it was one percent just edit it to one percent that's 0 0.01 but if it is five percent then uh 0 0.05 okay now for this place what this means is the output option okay it means where you want your answer to be displayed output option okay so do you want your answer to be displayed okay if you choose the automatic one which is the new worksheet it means that excel will automatically create a new sheet that's sheet 2 okay and display your answer there but if you choose new workbook it means that excel will create a new entire workbook 
fresh sheet sheet one and then display your answer there okay but if you choose output range it means that you want excel to display your answer on this same sheet one on this same sheet on this same workbook same sheet one and then but you have to choose a range where you want your answer to be displayed so to choose the range you can click here first and then choose your range so i want my answer to be displayed at this area so you click and drag in this area you choose the area where you want your answer to be displayed so i want my answer to be displayed in this area you can also decide to use the down someone can decide to use the down i decided to use the side here okay so i've inputted there okay so just press ok straightforward the answer is being displayed as you can see so there's a summary of your answer and then the ANOVA it all so the summary groups treatment one treatment two treatment three so this is treatment one treatment two treatment three okay and now if when you are selecting the uh, uh, labels in the first row if you had not included the title if the title was not part in the input range and you didn't select the it would have written column one if that's if they are grouped by columns it would have written column one column two column three but if they are grouped by row it will write row one row two row three something like that so are you with me so the count means the total number of values in each treatment so in treatment one we have three values in treatment two we have five in treatment three we have four and then the sum sum is the total so the total number the total values in treatment one is 29 total in treatment two is 11 total in treatment three is 16 then the average average also means mean the mean okay so the mean of treatment one is 9.67 the mean of treatment two is 2.2 and the mean of treatment three is four and then variance as well variance of treatment one treatment two and then treatment three so this is the ANOVA now we have a source of variation okay between groups and within groups okay then ss ss means sum of squares okay so sum of square between groups is 107.2 i can also write it sum of square treatment okay and then sum of square within groups is 9.46667 i can also write it sum of square error error can i can also write i can decide to write error here if it was in a work in a book i was working in a book i can decide to write error here and then treatment here okay so sum of square treatment or sum of square between groups is 107.2 and then sum of square within groups or sum of square error is 9.466667 then this is called df means degree of freedom so degree of freedom of the numerator this is degree of freedom of numerator which is 2 and this is degree of freedom of the denominator which is 9 to get a degree of freedom of a numerator as you can, if you can remember it's k minus 1 or c minus 1 whether you use k minus 1 or c minus 1 k is the same as c okay so k means k or c means number of treatments so treatment 1 treatment 2 treatment 3 or number of columns okay so we have three of them okay we have three treatments if you have four treatments your k will be four but we have three treatments in this question so your k or your c is three so three minus one gives you two as you can see then this the degree of freedom of the denominator is if you can remember n minus k or n minus c k is the same as c don't forget so some students use k some use c okay i always use k so n means number of values in all the treatments so we have one two three four five six seven eight 9 10 11 12 so we have 12 values in all the treatments so 12 minus 3 you know your k was 3 so 12 minus 3 gives you what 9 isn't it then when you come to this we have mean square ms means mean square so mean square between groups and then mean square within groups so mean square between groups is 53.6 and then mean square within groups is 1.051852 you can approximate it now uh the mean square within between groups was how it was gotten is like this ssb divided by two divided by degree of freedom of a numerator okay that's 107.2 divided by two gives you 53.6 and then um mean square within groups to get it is sum of square within groups divided by the degree of freedom of the denominator that's 1.051852 as you can see so to get the f this f is called computed f or calculated f 
okay they usually write computed f now to get a computed f f okay the computed f is um mean square between groups divided by mean square within groups or mean square treatment divided by mean square error okay so 53.6 divided by 1.05185 to gives you 50.95775 or in two decimal places 50.96 isn't it and then this is the p value this is a p value okay if you if you want to know what the p value is or how what p value means i have a v different video you can check it out you can check it out i have a different video on how to find p values and then this is critical value of f okay the critical value of f we use a table to find it okay we use the f table to find it we use the degree of freedom of the numerator and then the degree of freedom of the denominator to, to look for it i hope you remember that so to make your decision there are two ways of making decision the first method of making decision is to either to com uh, compare the computed f this and the critical value of f or to compare the p-value and the significance so please write the decision rule down there we check now the decision rule that's if you want to use the f the computed f and the critical f the rule says that if the computed f is greater than the critical value of f you should reject the null hypothesis but in absolute term okay if the computed f was negative in absolute term okay in absolute absolute of a negative number is positive okay so in absolute term if the calculated f okay the computed f is bigger or greater than the critical value of f what you do is to reject in another hypothesis isn't it but if it is less you fail to reject or you do not reject isn't it so let's see this is our computed at 50.96 as you can see clearly it is greater than the critical value of f which is 4.26 right so since it is greater we are going to reject the null hypothesis the null hypothesis says that the means are equal whereas the alternate hypothesis says that the means are not equal or at least one is different isn't it so since this is greater we've rejected the word the null hypothesis that's all another way of making your decision is you compare the p-value and the level of significance so look at this p-value one point two three e minus zero point minus zero five what this means is that if you don't know the meaning you can click on it you can click on that cell and then check the formula bar at the top here you see that it has displayed a meaning to you zero point zero 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 one two three that's the meaning of this okay something like standard form like one point two three times ten is for a negative five something like that yeah it means zero point zero 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 one two three four going so you are going to compare the p-value so let me use it here you are going to compare the p-value and then the level of significance so the second decision will say that that's if you are using a p-value if the p-value is less than the level of significance you should reject that is when you reject the null hypothesis but if the p-value is greater than the level of significance you fail to reject the null hypothesis so if you can see from here the p-value is less than the level of significance isn't it the p-value is less than the significance level isn't it so since the p-value is less than the significance level we are going to reject the null hypothesis so i visit that we've ended up rejecting using the two methods that i proposed yeah so we've ended up rejecting the null hypothesis so you can conclude okay so the question is that can we conclude that the treatment means are equal now remember the null hypothesis states that they are equal so since we've rejected the null hypothesis you you tell them that we cannot conclude that the treatment means are equal at five percent significance level or at 0 0.05 significance level okay so that is that is it okay so thank you for watching please do well to subscribe to our youtube channel and then you can watch more of our videos all this thank you